What about your father's political activism? How did that come to you, come wash off on you? Well, actually, again, his political activism, I didn't really, um, um, it was a you know, generation apart, but, but uh, he worked for the first, he was always against the machine. And this is important in terms of Chicago mm -hmm. politics because people think of Chicago politics and they think of the daily machine. Well, there was always a group of, of independents out there who saw the machine as antithetical to the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. antithetical to good government and, um, and, and, and honesty and reform in government. And so he, that was always the side of the equation that he found that he was on or found himself on. And so he worked for, he worked in the campaign of the first, uh, one of the early uh, black politicians to challenge uh, the Daily Machine. It was Charles, Charlie Chu. Mm -hmm. And Charlie Chu ran as a, um, as a reform candidate. And my father was in real estate at that time. And um, the real estate, the office that he and his partner had, when they had a meeting for Charlie Chu, the city inspectors came and, and told him that the water was leaking and the mm -hmm. gas was that da, da da And so they basically shut him down, put him out of business for a little while. So you can imagine there was no small amount of real anger and antipathy toward the daily machine in our, in our household. Um, and it was funny, too, because years later, of course, I got to know Rich Daly, the son, and uh, it was it was there was no small amount of irony. I don't think Rich Daly ever really understood or appreciated what a big leap that was for me, because because mm -hmm. uh, our household had been absolutely just anti Daly down the road. But but was there a dinner table discussion about politics, mm -hmm. about the machine, about Illinois politics, yes. United States politics, all yes. of that going on? Probably he wasn't so much. He he was active in local campaign efforts and in union campaign efforts and things like putting people to work on the street. There was a streetcar uh, fight, you know, to get people, blacks jobs working for the, um, uh, for the transportation company. He would do things like that. But his, his, his political vision was really more national and international. So I don't remember him being as involved with state of Illinois politics as national and international. My father very often wouldn't vote not very often. I don't think he. I don't think he voted in uh, primaries really, because he thought that you know he, as far as he was concerned, he shouldn't have to declare uh, which party he belonged to. Now, does his political activism account for the sit-in you stage when you were a teenager? Probably. I didn't expect it to be that. I didn't expect it was. You know, I didn't expect I'd be staging a sit-in, but you know, it, it happened, and and that just seemed to me to be the right thing to do was just not move, and so I didn't. And a moment ago, you mentioned mar marching with uh, Dr. King in the housing struggles in Chicago. Mm. Tell us about that. Mm. How old were you then? I think I was 15. Now, I'd have to check. I was either 15 or 16. I was still in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother uh, had cautioned me, you know, again, back to, by, by this point, they were um, split up. And so, uh, and so, and we were with my mother, and I remember her saying, you know, you don't want to get mixed up with that. You might get in trouble, and there's bound to be trouble. And, and of course, that was just my sign that, oh, I just I had to go, obviously, to the march at that point. So I went over, and it was marching. Um, we marched down, I think it was 67th Street. I, I have a sense that we marched down um, uh, Marquette Boulevard to get to Gage Park. And uh, I was paired with um, a veteran, a guy who had marched in the South, a white guy who had marched in the South. And there were some nuns in front of me. And I remember, I mean, it's just as vividly as if it was yesterday, because it was just that kind of a, of a turning point. And we marched, and the rocks in the bottles started flying. And uh, the guy with whom I was marching was hit by a rock, and he started, or a piece of glass, something. Blood started coming down his face. And of course, I'm just horrified at mm. this point, like, oh my God. He just took his, his handkerchief out and put it up there and stopped it. And then the cat calls were coming from the, from the sides. And I remember, you know, having, Again, grown up in a Catholic, more or less Catholic family, the nuns who were marching in front of me were being called all kinds of horrible names. Mm -hmm. And you know, when was the last time you slept with that black whatever mm -hmm. sister? You know, sort of. It's like so. I was horrified at that. Uh, there was a guy standing by the side of the road who was my age, uh, young, a little bit younger actually, probably 13, 12, 13, and he was yelling, "Semi-humans, go home! Semi-humans, go home!" 
And I looked at him and I caught his eye and I said, mm. it's not semi-humans, it's semi. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, semi-humans, go home. Semi-humans, go home. So we marched and got into the park itself and, um, and the, the violence was so horrible. There was no, I don't re, I don't recollect gunshots, mm. but I know it was rocks and bottles and and bricks and glass, and um, and so what they did was they put the women and children in the middle of a circle, and then the activists around that, and then the hardcore activists were the outside perimeter. And it got so bad, Dr. King was moved to the middle of the circle, and so he was as close to me as you know that. Oh, this go right over there. I mean, I literally touching mm -hmm. distance almost. And I remember because you're supposed to cover your head up like this, and we're down on the ground, and and covering up. And he was standing there, and looking just as calm mm -hmm. and sanguine in the face of all this. And I remember, literally, it was an epiphany for me because I was frankly ready to throw something back. I mean, that was my first reaction was, okay, next rock falls near me is going right back out there. Uh, but the epiphany at that moment for me was the real, what I came to understand to be the real message and the real power of nonviolence, which was that by standing there and by his example of, of peaceful resistance, by his example of claiming the high, moral high ground, mm -hmm. uh, by his response, he had, he had the victory. And that, ha that had he stooped, he would have been on the same level as the people mm. against whom he was fighting. Mm. And so it was in that, in, that, in that experience that I became committed really to uh, nonviolence as, and to his movement as opposed to that of some of my friends who at that time were beginning to gravitate in the direction of you know, the Panthers and you know, get the gun and you know, shoot back and all the rest of it.